Welcome once again to Hunky Study. This is a short video on finding maximas and minimas of functions. So in general, from Calc 1, the idea was this, that if you're given a function, given maybe by some equation, and that function has a restricted domain, say between 1 and 5, so we're only interested in the, in the function in that area, in, over that region. How do you find the maxes and minimums of this function, say f? And the algorithm is, has got two parts. You take the derivative, set it equal to zero and solve. This gives you the critical values. And secondly, you check the boundary. Of the domain. In this case, the domain was the interval zero to five. So the boundary of that domain just has two points. So you need to check X equals one and X equals five. We have a finite number of critical values. So the critical value would be here because the derivative is zero here, derivative is zero here. So you have two critical values. You check the boundary and then whatever is the largest value is the maximum value where it occurs is where it occurs. And the same with minimum value. So this is the short form of how you find um, maxes and mins in higher dimensions as well. But there's an issue in higher dimensions, and that is the boundary of the domain. So for example, the domain could be x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 1. f of x and y equals 3x squared plus 2xy. What is the maximum and minimum of this function on this domain? This is a circular domain, and we'll deal with this. Uh, but it's easier if you begin with a rectangular domain in the beginning, say 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2, 1 less than or equal to y less than or equal to 3. So this is the kind of situation I would like to deal with where we begin with a a graph of a function over a uh, rectangular domain where the rectangle is oriented. This one is square. One of the things is right now, you know how to graph these functions over such uh, intervals. This is called a two dimensional interval over such intervals. But the solution is exactly the same. You find the derivative, you set it equal to zero and solve. This is, gives you the critical values, and then you check the boundary of the domain. So the boundary of the domain suddenly becomes the more difficult part. Before it was just two points. Now you've got more work to do on the boundary. So let me give you a function and let's uh, take a look at it. I'm gonna share a screen for a minute so that I can get the function. Maybe this is it. Yeah, yeah. So here is the function, 2x squared minus 3xy. Uh, maybe 2x squared minus 3xy. and then uh, plus 3y squared. So it's a fairly simple function. It's a polynomial, a quadratic function in two variables. This is considered a quadratic term. We take the derivative now, x is a vector, set it equal to zero and solve. And so uh, you can easily do this by hand. f prime of x and y is 4x minus 3y comma, Uh, minus 3x plus 6y. 
And you can easily check that the only critical value is the origin. Zero, zero is a critical value of this. And the value of the function there is zero. So the critical values or the, um, the critical value that we need to check here is zero, zero. And f at zero, zero gives you zero. Could be a min, could be a max, but we have to check the boundary now. So checking the first part is easy. It's also relatively straightforward with Mathematica. So here I set up a, uh, the function and uh, then we have a plot of that function and uh, from zero to two and from one to three. So there it is. And we want to find the maxes and mins. Uh, the second one is solve the derivative of f equal to zero, zero for x and y. And in minuscule letters down here, it tells you zero, zero is the only solution to that. You have to be give, careful with solve. It doesn't always give you all of the solutions. So a, there can be a little bit of play between graphing and using mathematic commands, but let's check the boundary. So in our case, this boundary for x, zero to two, and for y, one to three, and so the region that we have here is this little rectangle, actually square. This rectangular region, you can see it in the graph, and, and that's what we would like to, that's what we'd like to look at. Zero to two for x, one to three for y, here is the region, and the boundary has four parts, the top, a bottom, left side, and right side. I'll do one of them. They all work the same here. So for example, the bottom. The bottom is described by y equals one. So the function on the bottom consists of subbing in y equal one, f of x comma one is equal to two x squared minus three X plus three. And X is between zero and two. So this becomes a one dimensional problem. You have a, a single variable here because the boundary will be one dimensional. But for this bottom, we have a one dimensional problem. Find the maxes and mins of this thing on this interval. And I'm going to move up a little bit and do that. To find the maxes and mins of a one-dimensional function, you take the derivative and set it equal to zero and solve. So f prime of x1, and there is only one variable here, is 4x minus 3. So x equals 3 quarters needs to be checked. The y value is 1, 3 quarters, and 1. Let's see, three quarters and one, that's this point right here. And we also have to check the endpoints here. And the endpoints are at zero, one, and at two, one. So that gives us three additional points to check. And we need to sub those into the function and check. And we'll get three values here. Whichever one of these four values is the maximum will be our candidate for max. And where it occurred will be our candidate for where it occurred. But we also have three other pieces of the boundary defined. So 
this is the, I'll share my little screen once again. So what, over these rectangular boundaries, finding the um, maxes and mins, a little more work, but basically not much different than, than one dimension. When we get more complicated boundaries, the boundary problem becomes a little more difficult. So that's it for the maxes and mins. This should carry you through for the first set of problems. Um, see you later.